All right, cool. Recording. Perfect. All right, let's start. All right, so thank you guys for joining. Everyone good? Everyone has energy? I know we have a lot of meetings today. You guys want to stand up, stand up. Um, so we're going to start this uh, buyer's consultation training. So you booked the appointment. You spent five, six hours a day prospecting, right? You got the appointment. Now what are you going to do, right? So we're going to go over uh, this buyer's consultation. We're going to give you a general idea of, of what to expect and how to kind of prepare for it as well. I'm going to dive right into it. So when I go on my buyer's consultation, I want to have everything prepped. Usually we're doing Zoom now. So I want to have everything that I'm going to pull up already in tabs, right? So, um, of course, first and foremost, I'm going to open up the buyer consultation on here. I'm also going to have our Zillow page put up, pull, pulled up because it does mention Zillow. And I'm also going to have the MLS pulled up as well, just in case they want, uh, we want to dive deeper into the market. And then uh, at the end of our buyer's consultation, we also ask for them to sign a loyalty agreement here. So what I do is I'll have this docu signed, ready to go, and I'll do a signing order, right? So I'll do a signing order, set signing order. I'll put their names in there. And once I go for the close to sign the agreement, I have the DocuSign app on my phone. I'm telling them I'm going to send you something. Click on the uh, on signing the document, document and it's going to immediately send to them. Send to them so they get it. it. I'm going to confirm that they got it. All right. So we're going to go through kind of the workflow. Right. Yeah. Oh, oh, shit. My bad. Sorry. Sorry, guys. All right. I'm going to have to do all that again. Hold on. Sorry guys on Zoom. So when I go on my buyer's consultation, you want to have everything prepared on your tabs that you are going to share. So I have the, um, oh, sorry, I was, is that good? Yeah. All right, cool, cool, cool. All right, rewind. All right, so when I go on my buyer's consultation, you want to make sure you have since we're doing Zoom nowadays, that everything that you're going to pull up is prepped and ready to go so you're not typing in, right? And they don't see your history while you're typing, you know, some links down. Um, uh, this is wrong. Um, anyways, so I'll, I'll have the buyer's consultation pulled up, okay? Because we're gonna, obviously gonna use that to present. You're gonna have your Zillow, our Zillow page set up too. Uh, the MLS, just in case they wanna dive deeper into the market. And then I have the DocuSign ready to go. So at the end of our buyer's consultation, we ask, I'm just gonna exit. Um, we ask them to sign a loyalty agreement. So to have this ready to go for the close, I DocuSign, have the DocuSign ready and I set a signing order. So once I'm going towards the close, um, I'll tell them, hey, you should receive the agreement in your inbox. I'll sign it on my phone while talking to them. And then it'll go to the next person that needs to sign, okay? If you're doing it with a junior and senior agent, right? Uh, sandwich your client in this list. So I'll put myself, because I'm speaking and going for the clothes, then the clients, then the other agent, agents on, on the call, okay? Um, all right, so let's go through the buyer's consultation. Who, who has done a buyer's consultation before? You guys, Thomas, you guys do buyer's consult, right? Right, right. Um, so of course, of course when you're, when you're on, on any, any type of public, public speaking, speaking, you know, consult in general, that is, that is your time to do two, two things, two main goals. goals. You build, build rapport and you build, and you build credibility, credibility, right? And within, and within our, our presentation, presentation there, are, uh, there, are there are pages where there's, where there's, there's time, time to build rapport and there's, and there's time, time to build credibility. credibility. So, so I'm going to give, gonna a, give a general aspect to where you can find those those times where it's a good time to pitch your credibility and build rapport, okay? So... We're going, We're going to start, start off, of course, what, what I, like I like to do in my buyer's consultation, and it's pretty, uh, it, it softens, softens, softens the mood a little bit. bit. You want to have at least five minutes of like soft conversation, right? Like, hey, how are you guys doing today? Um, you know, what was your favorite part about today? What did you guys do? You have any plans for the weekend, right? 
Um, and of course, introduce everyone on the call. My name is Emmanuel Seppi from PRG Real Estate. On the call, I have my business partner, Hervin, and our preferred lender, Deliri, um, and give them a structure. We're going to start off, the way that we like to start off these consults, guys, is since the financing part, if there's a lender on there, since the financing part is, is one of the most important parts of purchasing a home, it's basically the backbone of the transaction. We're going to have the lender go first. They're going to go over your options, show you guys some scenarios, and answer any questions that you have. Afterwards, I'm going to chime in on my side, and we're going to talk a little bit about what your goals are, what your options are in the market, and walk you through the home buying process, right? And you can alter this depending on what kind of client you're talking to, right? If you're talking to someone that's buying their first home, you want to dive deep into this presentation. If it's someone that has bought 10 properties before, you, you may just want to review it, make sure that they get, you know, every single part of the, 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 the process, okay? Let's do a home, uh, first time home buyers for now, since that's usually what we do. So we do that small talk, let the lender go, see if they have any questions. It's always great to have a lender on the call because that will gauge uh, their seriousness and where their comfortable monthly payment is, things like that, right? And now you can do your job in figuring out how you can structure your search around their budget, okay? So we're gonna go down here and so we're gonna talk a little bit about us, right? So I go through this really quickly. I kind of uh, created a, a flow of this whole presentation in my mind. So I go something like this. So my, myself and my team have been in, in the business for around 15 years. Within those 15 years, we've helped over 500 families buy, sell, and invest in real estate, right? We have over 500 st five-star reviews, both on Zillow and Google. And we are also, um, we are also Zillow Premier Agents and Redfin Partners. What website do you usually use to shop around, Mr. Customer? They usually say Zillow or Redfin. That's awesome. We had the great opportunity to be contracted and partnered up with these huge real estate platforms to help them out with their business. Uh, we were able to gain their trust, et cetera, right? Uh, we're also members of the top agent network, right? One thing in these consults, it's very long. You wanna make sure that they're interacting with you, right? Oh, that's something else I need to pull up. Top agent network. Okay, so I'll go into the top agent network. Um, we are a part of a, a network of the top 10% of agents in the area where, where we network with each other and share any coming soons or off market listings. Mr. Customer, are you familiar with the concept of an off market home? They usually say, yeah, I think I get it, but um, give, me, give me an example. Sounds good, let me pull up my portal. So when we start searching for your home, we're going to create a portal for you in this, in this website that shows you all these coming soon and off market listings and you wanna pull it up on the screen. Right, so just quickly browse through. If you have an idea of what they're looking for, right, like areas, I'll pull up San Jose, right? And you, you want to uh, make sure they understand the value of this, right? Mr. Customer, I'm sure you've been looking in the market. Uh, this is one of the ways that you can avoid competition in such a crazy competitive market, right? So we network with these top agents to find any off-market listings where you may be able to bypass any competition and just make an offer to the seller up front, right? There's one right here. So I'll show them right here, okay? And then bring it back to them. Mr. Client, Mr. Buyer, do you, uh, do you, do you see the value in this competitive market um, in off-market opportunity? And they'll usually say yes, right? And then from here, I'll talk a little bit about off-market listings. Um, at the end of the day, this is only one source of off-market listings where we're able to provide you. We also do a lot of listings in the area. So of course, if any listings that we have cater to your needs, we can see if uh, we can work out a deal with the seller, right? And of course, our outside network out, outside of this platform here, okay? Oh, I forgot, rewind a little bit. When I talk about Zillow, I'll pull up my, our team. So this is our, our team here. Uh, and uh, sorry, rewind, <laughs> I, I skipped ahead of myself. Um, so let's go back here. On our team, we have experience in mortgage, right? We have a lending arm, a part of our office. So if you want any second opinions, want quotes, just like we spoke with our lender in the beginning of the call, they can definitely assist you. We also have experience in development. Not only is our team uh, real estate agents, we have a lot of investors on our team as well. Uh, we have renovated property before to rent out or flip. 
So if, if, in, if in any case, we run into a situation that a property may need some repairs, prior to making an offer, we can consult with one of our contractors that we worked with in the past to give you an idea how, of how much things will cost so we can move forward and consider that within our offer, okay? We're also members of the National California and Santa Clara Associations of Realtors, which means we're full-time licensed agents here to service your best interests. Okay. And down here, I'll dive deeper into um, Mr. Customer. These are some of the values that I truly believe I provide to you as an agent, right? Um, we have extensive market knowledge. Within our years of being business and the amount of transactions we've closed so far, we understand what it takes to get you to the finish line and meet your goals, which is that home, right? And through our reputation and network, we're able to provide you with off-market opportunities where you may be able to bypass some competition and work out a one-on-one -on -one negotiation with the seller and avoid overbidding, et cetera, right? And uh, we, we solely try to provide the best client experience through our team model, right? And let me show you an example. So the way that our team is structured, we understand that this market moves very, very fast and that you need to be able to get into a property as soon as possible. If for some reason I'm not available, um, I have all of these other agents that I can call on, great agents that can assist you with any questions or viewings that you may need, right? You may be aware, Mr. Customer, that most real estate agents work as a one-man team, but here at PRG, we work in a collaborative environment where we're trying to give you the best customer service possible. Okay. And then of course, if you work with us, we have preferred vendors and resources that can help you at every step of your transaction, uh, whether we're buying a home, whether we decide to wait for a bit, right? We have lenders, real estate agents, escrow officers, um, title officers, contractors, et cetera. If you need it, uh, we'll name it. And I always try to make them laugh too, like try to get a couple laughs. So I have jokes already like prepared in my presentation. So when it comes to this, I'll say like, we're like the Amazon of real estate, right? Just come to us and we, we can most likely help you, okay? Um, and then I always, every time I finish a page or a section, I'll ask, do you have any questions, right? Okay, do you guys have any questions so far? All right, cool. Yeah, yeah. Sure. Um, one thing that I like to do is when we go into the extensive market knowledge, and this is something that I've been recently doing, is we have our Slack chat that has our market insight where mm -hmm. everyone posts, you know, how many offers are being posted in a city, what the offers went for, mm -hmm. what the winning offer was. So I actually just pull up the Slack chat and I share that to my client and I say, we have a chat that's dedicated towards this. So every day I have live market knowledge. I'm not like other realtors showing you stats about what happened in the past week or the past month. I'm showing you what I know every single day. And it's not just what I, the offers I'm writing, but it's the offers that my entire team is writing. Awesome. That way, you know, if you're looking in Livermore, I can go, just scroll up in this chat and I can see, oh, Livermore, 30 offers at the 1.1 to 1.3 million range. Mm -hmm. So we know exactly we're competing with at least 29 other people, mm -hmm. right? So I bring that type of value to you as well. Awesome, awesome, awesome. A market inside chat. It's one of our channels in our Slack. Yeah. Okay. Live information, live data versus any Exactly. Yeah. And that ties into your extensive market knowledge, right? We have a large reach, right? And uh, to, to pull uh, accurate data, recent data. Okay. And now tying, I'll usually say like enough about myself, right? Let's talk about you guys, right? So the way that I utilize these, these uh, line items is, is as bullet points to, to open up conversation, right? So, so Mr. Customer, let's talk a little bit about what your goals uh, and experiences are, right? Are you a first time home buyer or experienced buyer, right? They usually say first time home buyers for this case. Uh, what got you into the mindset of purchasing a home? Dive a little bit deeper into that, right? Be a little bit more curious. Why, why buy instead of renting, Mr. Customer? Uh, a lot of what I've been getting recently is my rent is going up and we'd rather put that money towards a house. Um, then just reiterate that and reconfirm. That's exactly what, you know, a lot of people come to me and do, right? Do you have a specific timeline for the purchase? Uh, do you have a lease ending soon? Do we have a deadline that we're looking for? Usually say there's, you know, we can stay in their lease, et cetera. So no rush. That's great. And two questions that I ask on this line, right? What's important to you in a home and what is important to you 
um, that I provide as your representation as your agent, right? So usually with first time home buyers, they won't, they won't have an, a lot to say because they've never, they've never bought a home or purchased with an agent. But as they list what they're looking for, usually they'll say, we just want a home, Emmanuel. So, so I'll say, yeah, that's exactly what I'm here to do. Or like communication, um, uh, you know, that's what, that's what we do as a company. We're, we're here to clear communicate with you throughout the whole transaction and process. And then I flip the switch on my end, right? I'll tell them what I expect from them right? Um, Mr. Customer, I appreciate you telling me what you expect from me. The only thing that I expect from my customers is uh, transparency and communication, right? Because I need to understand at what pace do I need to work and uh, what your feedback is every single time, you know, I send the property, et cetera. So I know how to proceed, right? At the end of the day, there is no rush. I work on your time. I just need to know how fast or how slow I need to work. Okay. Moving on from there. Any questions? No? Good. And then on this market review side, I don't just blabber on about the market. I ask them, Mr. Customer, what is your current perception of the real estate market? And they'll chime in, you know, the market's hot, blah, 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 et cetera. And, and, and that's, and you're right in saying that it's hot, you know, just agree. You know, generally nowadays people understand how the market's going. Uh, just give them a brief idea. You know, there's low inventory. Interest rates are still at a record low. Um, and you can give them an example. Rudy likes to say, facts tell, stories tell. S stories sell, give an example. You can bring it up in, in the Slack chat. Um, one of my agents submitted an offer in Livermore, 30 offers, sold 300K over asking, so they get an idea of the market review, right? Do you guys have any questions about the market? This is when they'll dive into like, do you think the market's gonna crash, et cetera? So you should be on a consult with someone that's able to answer that question, right? That's another trade. Um, so unless, uh, no, next other training. So moving on. So we'll dive into the home buying process, Mr. Customer, right? We've broken up the home buying process into three easy steps, right? And initially you'll want to just read off every single line item. That's not what you want to do because they're going to get bored, right? So you want to, you want to first read through this, understand what you're presenting. And this is how I do it. Uh, I tell them at the first stage, you're taking a great first step, Mr. Customer. You're meeting with the local expert in the area to, to understand what your objectives are, what your goals are, and look at your options. And you're also, uh, you spoke with our lender, Deliri, or Rudy, Mallory, whoever, um, to get a, a pre-approval. Once we get that pre-approval, I will structure your search surrounding what your goals are and your budget, okay? Then we go into the fun part, right? You want to excite them. Now we go into the fun part of home shopping you are going to get an automated home search from me with any coming soon and on market listings. And of course, if, uh, if you shop online and you see any properties online that you're interested in, feel free to let me know. Uh, we can operate with, on any platform that you see, realtor.com, Redfin, Zillow, whatever it is. Your friend's house, if you wanna buy your friend's house or your, uh, some, some of my clients wanna buy the current house that they're renting, let me know. I can get in contact with the seller and we can try to work something out, okay? Uh, and I'll keep you up to date. You know, I'm available to show seven days a week. Um, just give me around 24 hour notice if you want to view a property and we can make that happen for you. Okay. And that's where you build credibility. This is another stage where I build major credibility. When we go into this stage, now it's time to, we identify a property that we like. Now it's time to make an offer. And Mr. Customer, this is where I truly, I provide my best value because we are trying to, in a competitive market, put together an offer that protects your best interest, but also is strong enough to, to intrigue the sellers and have the highest chance of winning, right? So this is where I have, you know, provide the best value. What we're going to do here, I break this into three stages of submitting an offer. We're going to do three things, Mr. Customer. We're going to go over the comparable sales in the area. So we have a good understanding of what the home may sell for, what the market value for the home is, and what the home may appraise for, right? We're also gonna go over all of the inspection reports so we have a good idea of what repairs and renovations are needed for the property and how much do they cost so we can consider that within our offer, right? Uh, we're also going to be keeping up to date with the listing agent to get a good idea of how many offers they have. Um, we can try to get a range of you know, what the offers look like and then structure and uh, position our offer accordingly to have the best chance, okay? And then we'll move forward. I'll, I usually drop down into this contingencies. 
right? We also need to confirm our, con our conditions on the contract that protect your best interests. Uh, Mr. Mr. Customer, do you know what a contingency is? Usually they'll say no, and I'll give them a brief summary. A contingency is a condition on the contract where you're allowed X amount of time to satisfy your needs or whatever. Um, so we'll dive into uh, contingencies. So the inspection contingency will protect our earnest money deposit. Um, and we'll scroll back up usually. The reason why we have contingencies is to protect our earnest money deposit. So once our offer is accepted, we have to deposit an earnest money deposit. So you're building a little bit more credibility. Uh, Mr. Customer, do you know what an earnest money deposit is? They'll usually say no. Well, an earnest money deposit is um, an initial deposit, basically a good faith deposit. The seller it usually uh, requests for the buyer, once they accept the offer, to deposit a 3% uh, initial deposit into escrow to hold as, as good faith, right? And if we were to back out for, for any reason other than just cause, they have the opportunity to take that, that money. So if we're buying a million dollar house, 3% of that, that's $30,000, that's $30,000 on the line, we, we need to protect that. And the way that we protect that, Mr. Customer, is with contingencies, right? So an inspection contingency will protect your earnest money deposit and it gives you X amount of time to satisfy any inspections you need to do for the property. I always use examples because it's hard to, to explain with like definitions and stuff. For example, Mr. S Mr. Buyer, say we're looking to buy a property that doesn't have any inspections. We don't know, other than what we see with our eyes, we don't know what other repairs are needed for the home. So I would advise you to, to put in place an inspection contingency of maybe around 10 days, right? And within that 10 days, if anything were to come up um, on an inspection report that we order, say, for example, a $10,000 roof leak that needs to be repaired, we will bring it to the seller once we're in contract and say, Mr. Seller, you did not disclose this to me. Um, I would like to renegotiate. We can either ask for the seller to credit us some money to do the repairs. We can bring the price down. We can ask them to repair the, the costs before we close escrow, or we can back out um, and our earnest money deposit is safe. Okay. Uh, with the appraisal contingency, it's the same timeline. Uh, this is this is this will protect us in the case where, say, for example, we're we're purchasing a property for a million dollars. The bank goes out to appraise the property and they appraise it at nine hundred fifty thousand dollars, right? So, at that point, the lender will only lend you upon the value of nine fifty. That fifty k difference you will have to cover. So long as we have this appraisal contingency, we can ask the seller to bring the price down so we can get the loan or uh, we could be aware of this prior to making the offer and we can just pay that 50K out of pocket or we can back out and all is good with the earnest money deposit. And I'll, I'll wrap this around to, to one of the biggest values, which is the offer structure, right? Mr. Customer, that's exactly why we need to go through our due diligence phase and offer phase. So we have a good understanding of what the home may appraise at, right? Believe it or not, the market is so competitive that it is pretty common for homes to appraise under what people are offering because so many people are bidding the price up, it's going way over market value. So you kind of set that expectation there as well. Okay. The loan contingency protects us in the case, say for example, uh, we, we haven't gotten pre-approved yet, but we still would like to submit an offer. The lender has no idea whether or not you're gonna be approved. Um, so we have this loan contingency in that case. If, if something were to go wrong, we can back out if you're not able to afford, afford the loan or we can look at another lender option, okay? I'll ask any questions. Does that make sense? Perfect. Um, and then, of course, we understand in this buyer's market, almost everyone's coming in non-contingent. So I do, you do want to address that on the consult and not be like oblivious to that fact, right? Um, if you if you're not aware, uh, Mr. Customer, the market is so competitive right now that buyers are trying to find the uh, find every single way to make their offer stand out, right? In our market, it's standard for buyers to make their offer look stronger with waiving all of these contingencies, which means that even if a property doesn't have inspections, buyers are already considering any kind of repair or upgrades needed down the line. They just want the house. They are going to waive the inspection and buy the house as it stands right now. Okay. Um, with the appraisal contingency, most real estate agents, most good real estate agents are doing their homework prior making sure they have a good understanding of what market value is for the home and have a good understanding 
of what that gap may be if we were to keep bidding the price up, okay? And they're willing to pay that difference. The loan contingency, this is why us as, me as a realtor, I always want you to get pre-approved prior to, to going out and shop because we wanna have a good, under, a solid understanding that we are able to be uh, loaned this amount that we're looking to shop for. Okay, so you kind of tackle that. And I dive deep into, you know, um, um, at the end of the day, my job is to protect your best interest. If at any reason we need to remove these contingencies and leave our earnest money deposit uh, exposed and uh, vulnerable, it doesn't mean that we just forget about these things. Our team does our very best to satisfy these conditions before we even make the offer. For example, if the home does not have inspections, I will bring my contractor out there before we make an offer. So at least we can have a good idea of what fixings the house may need. And then we can consider that within the offer. The appraisal contingency, that's exactly why, you know, we do our homework. We have a good understanding of what appraisal value may be for, for the home and we plan accordingly, right? The appraiser has the same data as us, et cetera. So loan contingency, like I mentioned, that's why it's, 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 it's very important that you get pre-approved prior to shopping for homes. Any questions? You guys have any questions? Oh. What happens if appraisal value, if appraisal value is, is over, it's over market price, I'm ringing that bell right there. So you basically gain, you gain additional equity, instant equity. If your property, um, you bought, purchased the property for a million dollars, it appraised at 1.1. Now you have $100,000 of instant equity in the home. You did a good job as a realtor. You got a great deal. Etc. How does the inspection contingency play out on a house sold as is? The inspection contingency, that's a little bit more uh, in depth. When a, when a seller is looking to sell the house as is, which is basically every single seller out there, because they do not want to spend any more money than they have to in repairing the property, right? Um, if you have an inspection contingency, knowing that the seller is not going to want to renegotiate or anything like that, you can try your best, but um, we would use inspection contingencies to just renegotiate the price if need be, right? Um, you wouldn't necessarily ask for uh, them to do the repairs or anything like that. It's more so uh, because they have no inspections, you still need to know what's going on, right? Yeah. So you want to know how to plan ahead for the future. Cool? All right. That was very good. Awesome. And then we'll tie, uh, tie back in here. And then I'll go forward and say, you know, Mr. Customer, do you have any questions about the first stage? Do you see how my biggest value is when we make, we go into that offer stage, right? Yeah. Forgot to mention, we also tell your customers before we make an offer, we'll hop on a Zoom call similar to this with our lender and go over our potential options and make sure we have the most amount of information to make this offer, okay? Now we're moving into the second stage, right? So like I mentioned before, once your offer gets accepted, Best case scenario after our offer stage, offer gets accepted. Now we have to open up an escrow account and deposit our earnest money deposit in there. Mr. Customer, do you have any questions about escrow? Do you know what escrow is? Uh, do, that's another training. So assume that they did. Yes. And then moving forward. Now the next stage would be to submit the home's information to the lender. Uh, we'll get the uh, appraisal ordered at this point in time if you're already pre-approved. Um, your lender is just waiting for an address to start underwriting your file, right? And between that timeline, we're gonna do any additional inspections that we need, um, bring out our contractors out there to get some bids, et cetera, so we can move forward with removing our inspection contingency. Okay. And we're doing all of our renegotiations if we need, need to, and we have a contingency within the second stage. Any questions? No? All right. Now we're moving into the, uh, the closing process, all right? Um, in our experience, the most amount of work that you're going to do as a buyer and me as an agent and your lender is between these two stages. This is when we're, you know, filling out all the paperwork, renegotiating, et cetera. This last stage is basically a waiting game. You're waiting to sign off on the loan documents. That's all, uh, that's the document that has all the costs that you're paying for. Once that's okay, you, you deposit your earnest money, uh, your down payment plus closing costs into escrow for them to start recording. Okay. That usually takes around three to five days. Um, in between that time frame, we're going to do a final walkthrough because we want to make sure the house is still there, right? That's usually one of the jokes I say. All right, it's not funny because you guys aren't laughing. Um, uh, uh, 
And then once, once everything is in good condition and the property is in the same condition from when we offered on the property, we'll move forward uh, and record the home as your own. You will get the title and deed for the home and you are now a homeowner. Oh my God. We're like, congratulations. And then I'll usually say like, like if you guys drink, I'll, we'll pop some bottles, et cetera, blah, blah, blah. All right, okay. cool. Any questions? No. Now move forward down. Here's some vocabulary terms. We talked about earnest money deposit. Uh, do, you know, ask them if they know about down payment. I'll usually skip through this because it's already mentioned when we're talking. Um, closing costs, when you have a lender on there, they usually go through that. Any questions about closing costs? And then you can just read through this if they do. And then here's a sample escrow timeline. You guys have any questions about this? Would you like me to go through it? They usually say yes. And then I'll go through the whole thing. Just, I, I literally just read it. One thing that I do is let them know what's happening in between the days. So when I go to day seven, I, I usually say between day zero and day seven, we're meeting with inspectors, we're meeting with contractors, et cetera, renegotiating if you need to. And then between day zero and day 14, we're getting all, all of our documents approved by the lender, getting the appraisal, renegotiating, and then we go to closing, okay? Um, and then go through the loan process. I usually have the lender go through this or let them read through it. And then from here, I'll, I'll just stop here and then ask if they have any questions, what do they think? And then you usually have a lot more questions with like the contingencies, with timeline, et cetera. So there's usually be a little bit more rapport building and credibility building during that stage, okay? Now, one of the, one of the other reasons that we want to uh, want to do a presentation is to lock them down on the buyer's consultation and have some kind of mutual agreement that I am your agent and you are my client, right? So we, we tie them down with this last page here. Um, I, usually, I usually skip this, but you can read through if you'd like. I say this first paragraph literally states everything that I have said I will do for you as your agent, right? Present you with off-market opportunity, be able to show you properties whenever you need to, negotiate the best contract that protects your interests and has the best chance of being accepted and deliver you five-star service. But other than being a great agent and great team and getting you that home, there's some, there's some additional bonuses, right? Um, bonus number one, we provide a one-year home warranty uh, for you paid by the seller, right? That's usually worth $550. And these, this home warranty, of course, it being your first home, we wanna make sure the first year in your home is as seamless as possible. This home warranty will usually cover major appliances, rekeying, things like that. If you want an example of it, I can send that over to you. And if the seller does not pay for it, I will pay for it for you out of my pocket because I want to ensure that that first year in your home is, uh, is seamless, okay? Uh, bonus number two is our cancellation guarantee. If for, for whatever reason, you are not satisfied with the services that we've been providing, maybe you don't like the shirt I'm wearing or I smell bad, right? Um, we can go ahead and cancel our agreement. Uh, at the end of the day, there's no obligation to purchase any property. You don't pay us commission or anything like that. So, um, but keep in mind, I always, you know, let them know up front. At the end of the day, I'm a small business owner. I always want to improve on my business. So if you see that there's any way that I can improve my services with you, let me know. I am open to constructive criticism, okay? So you kind of break that ice there. Um, and then bonus number three is our sell for free guarantee. That means if you are unhappy with the purchase that we helped you, uh, the house that we helped you purchase within the first 12 months, we will sell your home and waive our listing commission, right? Glad to say, Mr. Customer, I've never had to use bonus number two or bonus number three in the past, right? So I usually say something. I need to change my presentation. Y'all are like, y'all don't like it. Um, and then bonus number four, you do not pay as a commission. Mr. Customer, do you understand how great buyer's agents like myself get compensated? I've had people like, oh, do we pay you? And I was like, I wish, but that's not how it works, right? So the way that commissions are paid, sellers, uh, the seller and listing agent uh, determine what they want to pay me. So it comes out of the seller's pocket, not your pocket. I'm here to just provide the best service as possible. Um, and then here's the 895 transaction fee. This is something you will get a lot of headbutting in because not a lot of broker brokerages do it, but we do it so we can provide the best service to them, right? I'll usually end off at the only transact, the only thing that we charge you for, and it doesn't go to me, it goes to our transaction team, is an $895 transaction coordination fee, where our transaction coordination fee overlooks all seven parties of the transaction to make sure everyone follows the timeline and contractual terms. Okay. 
if you want to list like the seven parties, buyer, buyer's agent, seller, listing agent, um, escrow, lender, and any logistical needs like inspections, things like that. Done. Okay. Uh, Mr. Client, do you have any questions for me? Sounds good. And the tie down that, that we use, I learned this from Mitch. If I were to send this to you, do you have any questions or, or um, about the agreement or can we get this signed and we can get the ball rolling? I have a few properties I would like to show you, right? They usually say, yes, I'll send it to them right away. And then while they're waiting, I'll just sit here and I'll start pulling up the MLS if they're open to. You should have had a good idea of what they're looking for. So I'll quickly just pull up like active single family home, uh, million dollars. Okay, and then pop, up, pop, pop it up like this, right? Now I won't go one by one. I'll just show them what's available and I'll just send everything out to them. Okay, and, and that's about it. Cool, question, huh? Verbal, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then they'll also ask, they'll also ask. Let's do this, let's do this. For time's sake, I like it, I like it. Hey, hey, let's do this, guys. Let's give them three, like, hard objections or something, right? Is there something new for some of you guys? So give them some objections. Give me, give me something where you feel your seller or your, your client would say, like, nah, I don't want to sign this. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I don't want to pay the uh, 95 for the reason. Else. Right, right. It make it right, no, it makes sense. <laughs> and honestly, in that situation, again, guys, what I want you to understand is they don't know what to expect. Your buyer really doesn't know what to expect. At 895, a lot of buyers don't know. We're assuming it's a great agent. Right? We have that limited belief in our head already. Because I guarantee you, a lot, and I'm not, but it's good that you guys bring it up. Because a lot of times people are not like, well, I'm not paying 895. You just went over this whole presentation of what you're getting. Right? So you're going to go back to all the bonuses that you're getting. That's what you're going to be focusing on. But again, and there's other ways that you can word it, right? Well, here, here's how I would tackle it, right? So, Mr. Customer, I understand not, not a lot of agents do this, but this is, the, this is one of the real reasons that we were able to sell 200 homes last year, right? Because I focus on what I'm good at, and I let my team handle everything else. So this transaction coordinator will be handling all seven parties of the transaction, make sure everyone's following the timeline and terms, so I can do my best job and negotiate your your best terms and protect your earnest money deposit, right? right? Or else I'll just be running around right? seven parties. Makes sense, right? Makes sense. Makes sense, right? Yeah. And then some people say like, uh, is this is this uh, binding? Do I pay you anything for this, or is there any obligation to purchase property? They never read. It's like right here. At the end of the day, Mr. Mr. Customer, I am here to give you the most amount of information for you to make the best decision for yourself, right? You don't not you do never you never need to buy a property. I'm here to just provide you with information and consult with you and help you out. Okay. Regardless, if you, you never buy a property, I'm still always here to help. Okay. If you ever need anything, let me know. I don't do leases. <laughs> Yeah, into escrow. Oh yeah, yeah. It doesn't go to me. It goes to the transaction yeah. coordination team. I feel like that's like the final. Yeah. 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 yeah, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And and then one thing one thing that I I learned from a. Uh, all right, hold hold all comments. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, yeah, one one thing that Zahara taught me is sometimes you know sometimes they'll blank out, right? So so they won't even be paying attention at the last part. Um, when you send the DocuSign, don't just send them the last two pages. Send them the whole thing, so you can tell them you know once you acknowledge this, you will have a saved PDF version of the whole presentation in your email to review when you when you'd like. Okay. Um. Cool. Any other questions, concerns, anything like that? Sure. Yeah, go. What if I don't care about the home warranty? I don't care about the 550. How about you pay for the 550 towards my insurance? No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, well, that's just how we work, right? 
<laughs> on the cost right right i'll just say no right and if they keep haggling like and they if they're fixated on that bring it back to at the end of the day mr mr customer what do you want five hundred dollars or do you want a home right okay go i do not give commission back i don't give commission back yeah no okay yeah yeah i usually just say no and they're like oh my agent does it does your agent provide you with the same uh opportunities as my team does right this is the only reason why we've been able to sell 200 homes without giving rebate right so where 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 your track record like your backpack that's like your shield you know every time i like i flex on them all the time like 200 deals in one year. Like, not a lot of people have done that. No, I wouldn't do that. You never want to buy heads. You don't, you never want to shout out the other agent. Yeah. Yeah, Jordan Ma. Yeah. 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 No, keep going. It's mentally. It, it, yeah, it's, it's, there's no legal obligation on this agreement where they were to cancel it, where you can, like, you, there's no uh, legal repercussions on that. It's all just yeah. mental. Once they sign it, they're like, all right, like, I trust you, you know? Yeah. <laughs> also with the 895, like, when we have our lenders start to call with us, yes. our lender will include that in their closing costs. As a part of their presentation, and they'll hype up Melissa, right, on what she does. And then another thing that we can do, we've done, is we just include stories about how Melissa's helped us throughout the presentation. So that when we do get to the very end where they're asking for the signature, we've already hyped up Melissa so much where they don't even question, it, right? Yeah. Like, but they just even said, like, you know, like, Melissa's been great. Like, there's been times where as the buyer, like, the client would, the seller would try to come and take our turn of money deposit. But because Melissa made sure all our disclosures were signed, everything was on time, right? They weren't able to come after our deposit. Mm -hmm. And then he also said, like, oh, like, even as a seller side, we also use Melissa on that side. So we were able to go after a buyer's deposit because they weren't following the rules that Melissa had been following here. Yeah. Right? So that type of value is like thirty thousand, forty thousand dollars worth of value where eight ninety five doesn't mean like anything. It's the stories that build your credibility. Right, yeah. so you, they know that you've done it before. You've done it time and time over again, and you're there. You're just out there to help. One thing that I, I I tell my my clients is that my goal here at PRG is we build a team that backs you. Right, me as your agent, the lender uh, that ha that's handling your finances, and our transaction coordination team that handles all logistics and contractual backend systems. So you will have the most efficient home search available, right, or possible, right? So. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, that's that's some other stuff. Any questions in Zoom? Any questions here? Any other questions? Cool. Good. All right, guys. You guys have any questions out in the Zoom world? Uh, another thing is too. This is another training, but after you do the buyer's consultation, you get this signed. You need to set them up on a search, right? Make sure you're following up with them uh, actively. Um, you on this call as well. What we usually do is. Uh, why don't we do this, Mr. Customer? Why don't we put me, uh, you, and the lender in the group chat? So if you have any questions regarding the consult whatsoever or want to schedule tours, we can do we can do so now. And also, of course, ask them: uh, Are there any properties that you'd like to see this weekend? I can schedule them for you as you know after this call, things like that. So the follow up is always key afterwards. Cool. All right, sounds good, guys. Thank you guys for joining. In the Zoom world, thank you guys. Thank you for your questions. Hopefully that was helpful. Uh, let us know if you need anything. All right. All right. Bye, guys. Thank you. Thanks, Emmanuel. Hey, guys, if you guys want, what'd you do?